Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining in this site. Rahul Magan here as a Chief Executive Officer of Treasury Consulting LLP. And today we are going to covering a very interesting topic, which is known as valuation of a deliverable range forward contract, and whereby we are covering a currency which is known as USD INR. Now, as you very well understand that lot of volatility which is happening in the market, especially in terms of G7, especially GBP, Euro, and all, and uh, Brexit is round the corner. A lot of talks has been happening in the market. In fact, today also. Uh, there was a there there was a talk which is happening on the Bloomberg TV that uh, by maximum by quarter one 2017 the banks majority of the banks in the England who pertains to the other entities of the European Union like Sweden, Romania, Germany, France basically their principles were like are there like Credit Suisse Credit Suisse is basically a Switzerland based bank Santa which is a Spain based bank. So there was a talk which was there that all these will move to their parent countries because there are some issues in the pre-exit which they are not in a situation to face on. Now in that regards, there has been a lot of uh, volatility. This, this, these such kind of talks are bringing a lot of volatility in the market, and which is certainly not good for the people because not good for the market. And if we are uh, here agree with the theory that uh, India as a country has been decoupled from the pre-exit, then this is wrong. India never be decoupled from the pre-exit. So your USD INR will surely face a volatility. Plus we need to add that, uh, plus certainly which we need to add that uh, the SC INR payment which is uh, foreign currency non-resident bond, uh, the window of approximately 36 billion or 26 billion dollars of the payment. That window will again face a stress because as for the media, that majority of majority of that has not been hedged. Hedge in the sense like NATS, NATS stands for Nationalized Bank. They will come in the market and they will buy. They will buy from the market. Henceforth, as per few banks, that probably by end of December 2016, the rupee will go to 68 as well, which is a very high number. And I don't be surprised that if by December rupee might touch to say 68.50 as well because. Uh, Liquidity is freezing up in the in the system, and uh, I don't think that RBI is having any control. Uh, RBI is having any control over the same. But nonetheless, uh, here. But nonetheless, so I sh surely don't think that the forward contract is uh, a, a valuable uh, uh, foreign exchange instrument which we, which we can use. And I think the corporates uh, over the period should move to the range forward contract, and this is how the range forward. This is how it would move on, right? So we assume that the spot rate for USD INR is 68 and 68.02. Now bid means when an exporter selling and bank buying, ask means when an uh, uh, when an importer buying and the bank is selling. And two paisa is the margin of the bank. Of course, the, the this is the bid ask spread, short bid. I assume that one year premium is trading at four rupee, but sitting today it is trading at three rupee thirty paisa and four rupee five paisa. Volatility we assume as 10% and 10.5%. The charge we assume is one fourth of a pesa here and one fourth of a pesa here. Now, in case of the buy put contract, now range forward is very different from an option contract. First of all, we need to sorry from a forward contract. First of all, we need to understand the exact difference between a forward contract and an option contract. Forward contract is a contract wherein you have an obligation, but you wherein you are having an obligation, but you are. Uh, you know you have an obligation and you, you need to go go ahead maximum what you can do you can cancel it or you can roll over that however in case of the option contract you don't have any no obligation whether you have a right of course there is nothing free in this world and to get this right you need to pay something and that payment is shortly known as the premium and that premium is to be decided by the black small model of course over the period of the time uh, there are a lot of people uh, over the period over the period of the time there are a lot of people who uh, there are a lot of people who who tend to believe that uh, uh, that black scholes is a is a flawed model and uh, banks are using their own proprietary based models and i absolutely agree with this as well because to an extent black scholes is flawed now and uh, banks are uh, using their own models there is nothing wrong in that right so what would happen, uh, range forward is also known as cost reduction structure and range forward would have two legs but we need to appreciate the fact that majority of the people across the globe are still dependent upon the black scholes, max to max. When I acted as a treasurer, I heard from several banks that people started making their own uh, own proprietary based softwares to whom they are terming this as a uh, basically modified black scholes. Now in case of uh, range forward contract, 
because it is, it is a kind of an option strategy, then we need to appreciate one fact that this is absolutely do not depend upon the premium which you are getting in the market. You can swing your prices. So it is just like a tea. The, you can put more sugar, but the more sugar you are going to put, the more costlier, costlier would be the tea. So if I take in a simple example, forward contract is just like a tea with the two cubes. So if you buy a tea from a, from a hotel, maximum you will get two cubes. Option contract is just like a tea with multiple cubes. The more the cubes you will pay, you will take, and the more uh, the more charges you need to pay. Now, and that uh, cube, which is a just a little layman which I mentioned here, that cube is shortly known as the option money mess, which I mentioned here, which you can see right up front here. Now, option money mess is divided into into uh, overall it is divided into three parts. One is known as and the money, one is known as in the money, and one is known as out of the money. Both in the money and out of the money are further divided into two parts, deep in the money and deep out of the money. So this is how the valuation of a uh, range forward exporter would be done in case of both at the money, in the money and out of the money. At the money is 72, you can see here it is F2. This is your, uh, this is your spot rate plus your premium minus your charge. As simple as that, this is spot rate uh, plus premium plus minus your charge. This is your uh, at the money. Now you have uh, in the money. Now in case of in the money, you have to do like this. You know, this is at the money plus one wall. Now wall we assume this is 10%. But sitting today, INR walls are very high. It is approximately 11 and a half to between 11 and a half to 12%. So that you need to understand that, you know. So this is 100% plus, uh, plus that uh, 10%. Right, then you have deep in the money, which you will press here. <coughs> deep in the money means in the money plus this one wall 10%. Now, before going higher, let me explain you two. Now, this is for buy put. In fact, these two also for the buy put, but this is for buy put. Let me let me paint this with the color blue. Okay, and hold this control B. Now, if market is right now, a forward contract would generate 72 rupees for you. But if you wanted to do using an option, using an option, and you wanted to go for in the money and the deep in the money, then in that sense you need to shed out. And once you need to shed out, then you need to shed out the premium. You need to pay a very hefty premium because market is allowing you to pay 72, but you want 87. So you need 80, either 87 or or approximately 80 in the in the offset when 79.19. So you need to shed out a very good premium. And also you need to appreciate one fact very sincerely here, which is that in case of an, uh, in case of buy put when you're going in the money, your risk management policy should also allow you to able to pay you very good premium and you should know that how to capitalize this and capitalize this in the books. Because if you don't know how to capitalize this in the books, then there is no point you can go ahead in the market. So that is something you also need to understand that how, how you can capitalize this in the, in the books. In case of out of the money, which is here, right, the formula remains intact. You need to do F2. Here it is minus one wall. Here it is add the money when one wall is 10%. Henceforth, I put this 90%. Here it is out of the money minus one wall. I put this 90%. Here I will mark this as green or some other color, say pink. Why I mark this as pink? Because this is something which you need to execute. Because why options are always out of the money? Because this is just like one arrow and two sparrow. Sparrow number one is that you will buy put is what? Buy put is cognizant is having right to sell $100 million to UBS at, at an agreed rate, which is a corporate like. Because who is the corporate here? Cognizant. Who is the bank here? UBS India. So cognizant is having the right to sell $100 million to UBS at an agreed rate, which is a corporate like. Another is here. Uh, so if cognizant will do this, then cognizant would kill two sparrow from one arrow. Sparrow number one that they will pay less interest. They will pay less premium to they will pay less premium to the bank because of course if market is allowing me to sell at 72 and I'm selling at 64.80 approximately or 58.32 approximately, then I would sell the less premium. Whether it is a black scholes model, it is a modified black scholes model, or it is anything, I will shell out the I will shell out the less premium. In that in in that sense, the other way around, 
the other way around if i go here i will shell out more premium so this is first sparrow second sparrow is that what is byport congresent is having a right to sell 100 million at an agreed rate to ubs india who is his banker the more you go the more you go down the more benefit you will be able to get of the volatility of course i would appreciate one fact that there are a lot of corporate treasurers in the market who still tend to believe that if market is giving you 72 why you are going for 64.80 you are losing approximately 8 rupees or if you are going deep out of the money you are losing 14 rupees there is no point of this so on so forth but range forward is an excellent uh, stuff in case of those currencies those who always depreciate like inr like i know that when i started my career uh, in 2007, in 2008, INR touched 50, and at that moment there was a great, great havoc in the market. That how can that how INR touched 50 and so on, so forth. A big havoc was there in the in the market. But now, if somebody will ask you that INR moved to 50, is a, is an intrinsic. In fact, less than intrinsic. I know two years ago when INR touched 60, there was a big stuff in the market. All business newspapers covering that. Oh, INR touched 50, this, that, Bagara and X, Y, Z. What did happen? Today, 60 is an intrinsic value. 60 is, is, is like that. And I know that over, over the next two years' time, INR would maintain an intrinsic value of 70. So in that regard, it is very important for you to... I'm not saying that forward contract is of no use. Please be honest. But what I wanted to say is that option con the forward contract, the complete hedging program of the company should not be dependent only in the case of the forward contract. It should also be dependent in case it should it should also have an option options also and in case of that you should have a set of forwards you should have a set of buy put you should have a set of range forward and if required you can have a seagull also we will cover seagull that as well but at the little point of time so this is how you will calculate the moneyness of, of an option contract either you are at the money in the money out of the money or deep out of the money now let me write this so that uh, you should not forget that this in, involves premium this involves FT premiums. This involves low premiums. And this involves absolutely low premiums. Now, now what I do, I will do the buy put and sell call. I will go for out of the money because as a corporate treasurer, whenever I did the option contract, I always went for out of the money. So I went for out of the money and what I did, I did here. 64.80. I'm assuming 64.80 or you can assume 64.79. So not a problem. Now, I don't have a black scores model. Neither we have the time and the bandwidth to explain the black, the black scores model here. So we assume that. One thing which we need to appreciate in the black scores model that the more you go out of the money in case of the buy put, the more the greater would be the spread. Because point is very simple. The point here is that buy put premium would always be higher. On the other hand, sell call premium would always be lower. So I need to shell out something in case of the buy put. What would happen? I don't shell out in case of the buy put. Rather, what I do, I will simply exp um, I will simply go it down. So, of course, if I went down, in case of sell call, I will get the premium. But Reserve Bank of India do not allow corporates to go ahead and get the premium. Rather, Reserve Bank of India go and allow to have to, to, to compensate that uh, premium using the strike rates. So, what I do, I assume that here, here, you know, I assume that here it went to, here it, uh, here it went to, say, 80 equals to 80 right so my buy put and sell call would be 64.7978 and, and and it would be like 80 so i would have a range forward contract now i am going to use the screen a uh, little bit more i'll get down so i would have a range forward contract i would write cognizant range forward contracts wherein I would have two legs. The leg one would be buy put and the leg two would be sell call. I will I will bold this all the control V and
now i'll click the price now what is the price of the buy put contract the price of the buy put contract is this what is the price of the sell call contract the price of the sell call contract is this which is absolutely 80 now this is how it moves now this is the first part of the video and we are winding up this in one minute but before winding up let me assume that the settlement prices because this is done at the tokyo cut Tokyo cut to be a uh, Tokyo cut to be taken two working days before uh, you know an option contract. And uh, for more detail about the Tokyo cut, you can refer our YouTube channel. Now here I assume that the settlement prices. Now in case of the settlement prices, I assume at five, say sixty two, sixty three. 60 i take one diplomatic 64 one assume is 75 and here i here i assume it to be 78 or take it 74 72 here i take it uh, 81 and here i take it 100 so these are the five settlement rate which we are taking and we are going to draw a settlement uh, matrix here to draw a settlement matrix, uh, let me make this as uh, this. So we are going to draw a settlement matrix here. This is how the buy put would, would work, and this is how the sell call would work. And then we are going to discuss in, in this next video. We are going to discuss about uh, how this settlement would work. Just give us one minute. Let us draw the settlement matrix. Okay, and this is the settlement prices which we have. Which we have. Right? So, this was the first part of our YouTube video, and uh, in the second part, we are going to take ahead the settlement. You are always welcome to connect with us, and here is our website. You are welcome to visit our website, uh, which is, uh, uh, you are welcome to visit our website. You can go ahead with the, uh, this is our uh, website. You know that we are a trainings, publications, business domains, CFO services. These are our business domains. You are welcome to visit us. Uh, you are welcome to let us know in case you have any requirement. So thank you very much for that. And uh, in, the, in the next, we are going to cover the settlement. Thank you very much.